Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is David Grant, and I would like to call this uh, meeting of the Universal Basic Income Task Force to order at uh, 6.05 p.m. So this is the meeting of Thursday, October 14th. When I call your name, just please say here. Uh, for the record, Carolyn Anderson. Here. Colleen Bennett. Christine Caruso. Here. Amanda Detmer. Here. Stefan Palmer. Here. Gina Rosich. Here. And Stephen Ross. Okay, we do have a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the approval of the minutes from September 9th. Uh, that was sent out in a previous email prepared by um, another staff member in our offices, Adam Murphy. Adam. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those draft minutes? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Sure, motion. Yes. Gina makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Yes, and second. Amanda seconds. And I, I think we're joined by Colleen. Is that you, Colleen? Yeah, it's me. I'm a little bit late, like four minutes late. I was oh, no, 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 you're, you're fine. All right, I'll go ahead and put you down for attendance. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. so there's currently a motion on the floor to approve the minutes. Um, any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented to the task force, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. So let's go ahead and jump right into working group updates. Uh, Gina, you have the floor. Um, I drafted a very rough draft uh, in um, accordance with the outline that uh, David, you provided us at a prior meeting. Um, and I have shared that with various members of the task force um, who have provided commentary. I have I provided additional commentary today. Um, one question that we had was the page limit and wondering if how strict the page limit needs to be. The second question is whether references are required. Those are good questions. And I was following along with those emails. Uh, what I would say in terms of page limit, let's go ahead and put all of our thoughts on paper. And then over the course of the next couple of months, we will find ways to whittle it down. Uh, in terms of what uh, an ideal page would be like a final report, uh, I would imagine in December, we'll submit something to council that is between 10 and 15 pages in total. Um, so that's kind of where my thought process is on this. Obviously, if we just put all of our thoughts down on the paper, um, we'll soon determine that maybe we don't need four pages for an introduction. Um, and maybe we want to invest more space into our methodology section or how we're going to identify participants. Great, because um, that, that is excellent news. I know Steve has written uh, extensively, quite in depth, around his thoughts on various aspects of the method section, um, for example. And um, there were questions around what needs to be included in the introduction section in terms of background. Um, and I know that some questions have come up uh, about the who to be, who should be selected, which uh, well, I guess we'll get to later on in, in the meeting. Um, but I did not, I mean, I sort of included a couple of references just, uh, but not as references in the body. So, um, we need to know whether those need to be included as well. And I would like to add that I, I threw this draft together, but I am not doing the active editing of this draft. My understanding is that Adam and David are the people who are responsible for finalizing any drafts. So, uh, so I just wanted to offer some clarification. Um, I sent everyone a link to be able to um, add to the draft. Uh, in terms of the role that myself or any other staff member within council has, um, originally when I had a conversation with Adam, who was working with us on this, I said, you know, while we have these pages, let's try to distill it down uh, just to make it a little bit more palpable. As we began that work, I quickly realized maybe that's not the best approach. Um, instead, let's take everything for as it is. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, as our working groups continue to do work on this, they will be able to distill it down. 
Um, we didn't want to get in a position we, where we are editing um, your material because you all are the experts on this. And I don't really know what's important and what is not important per se. Uh, but what I would say is that if you needed us to take a more active role on the editing, I'm comfortable doing that, but I just wanted you all to be aware of what you know our thought process was on it. Okay, so um, I do not have the bandwidth right now to be responsible for the entire editing of the of the document. I tried to uh, pull together what the research folks um, had uh, written, although again there were things that could be um, added. Um, but I, at this point, I do not feel comfortable being responsible for the final edit of this document. Well, and keep in mind that when, when I hear final edit, I'm thinking of the final report that's being submitted in December. Um, and so what I would say is that we still have another month and a half to really pull this together. With what information has already been submitted, I think that we're on a good, we're in a good place. Uh, and so really, once we identify the researchers' goals, um, and work that in, everything else can be cleaned up. Uh, and I'm hoping that as we continue to have the conversations that our workforce has, uh, or so that, that we've had rather over the last couple of weeks, we can start to really narrow down who our recommended target audience is going to be. Uh, and I think that that in itself is going to fill out, you know, a couple of pages because we'll need to provide multiple recommendations on who you know potential groups may be um, that might be the best for this program. That's right. And and honestly, moving it from five to ten pages uh, is a relief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that overall we're going to be very flexible. Again, we need to be mindful of the audience. Uh, not only is this for council members, but it's going to be available for the public. So I think providing you know enough detail to give folks an idea of where we anticipate this pilot program being next year, if it's implemented, um, is good, but not weighing them down with unnecessary jargon, uh, because I don't think that that's gonna be very helpful either. And, and I agree, and that's why I, I think your insight and editing will be really uh, welcomed and useful um, be, uh, uh, because we're used to writing for certain audiences and you understand this process, I think probably better than anyone here. Yeah, and I would be okay with that. Again, I it, what I would say though, is I would, I think the editing for me is going to be what how I would phrase something and then I'll highlight that so that I'm not removing any of your text because again, I don't wanna edit any of you. Uh, and then you as the researchers can say, yes, I agree with this edit, let's, let's incorporate it. Or no, I, I think that it needs to be stated in this way because you know it makes more sense uh, in terms of the context of the paper. I think that's really helpful. I, I reread today and I know that there were some um, conflicts around the way certain concepts were being communicated. And I, I thought that there, you know, there were some sort of issues around like, is this accurate or not? But it seemed more a question of tone and audience um, than, you know, sort of the truth value of those statements. And so, you know, I think both guidance on who, who is the readership and thinking about the tone that we want to strike um, is really helpful, uh, you know, to the, you know, extent that that can be clarified. Um, that I, I think in writing different types of pieces that you know, it's much different than an academic paper, you know, a white paper or a policy paper. So it's just really helpful. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that, you know, as Adam and I were reviewing the information, we definitely saw some philosophical differences uh, in how this is going to be put together. And so we'll have to work through those things. But, you know, I would say that more is better. Uh, so just continue to, if you got a good thought in there, put it in there and we'll find a way to make it work. But I do, I, I genuinely feel like we're in a good place. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I do have a question. I, I apologize, I was not able to attend the last meeting. Um, I did hear briefly, um, is there gonna be a, a grade requirement for families to participate in, in the UBI? 
Oh, um, are you referring to the children between? Yes, like, they have to okay. be in a certain grade. So there was some discussion about, you know, having having children in grades between third and eighth grade. I think at one point, um, nothing's been finalized yet, though. And I think based on, you know, developments at the federal level, plus the continued meetings that we have with folks that do this kind of work, i.e. the benefits cliffs or, you know, the, the insight that we received from the Greater Hartford Legal Aid, we're trying to really figure out um, if we want to have families and that's a recommended group. Well, how do we how do we um, best define what that looks like, um, and and what qualifiers we would potentially recommend using? But keep in mind, Stefan, that none of this is like the 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 task force is not going to make a decision on on the program per se. Rather, the purpose of the paper is to articulate how the program should be developed and who the researchers on the task force would recommend be part of the participants, like which groups. And then they would offer, you know, why they recommend specific groups, why they recommend specific grades, like what all that means. And then city council will decide, okay, that makes sense. Let's, let's do something like this. Okay, the reason why I brought that up is because I've been asking parents at Global Academy, which is the school that my son attends, I've asked single dads, I've asked single moms, I've asked two parent households, and all of them have asked, what, why does it matter what grade my child is in if you're giving me help? As long as my child is in school, I should qualify for the program. Um, I've had parents say, so if they're only going to do third grade, then I automatically don't qualify, and I got four kids and I'm a single mom, but I work the only thing that disqualifies me is I don't have a fourth grade. Um, we are talking about Hartford, Connecticut here. A lot of the families in Hartford have small children that are not in third and fourth grade. Um, I think that's kind of putting restrictions on the, the pilot. Um, if we're gonna do this and say it's for the families in Hartford, then I think we need to think about guidelines for families in Hartford. Um, again, I've been asking people for like the last two weeks now about this, and it's been all negative feedback about a, a grade required. I haven't got one positive feedback from not one parent of why that will be put in there. Um, you know, Stefan, I just want to say thank you so much for giving us this feedback because I think this is a, well, one, it is so important to hear this feedback from the community and thank you for, for, for doing that, for soliciting this feedback. And it's also a perfect example of how, you know, we, um, researchers may design an ideal framework or structure and that that ideal framework or structure to get what uh, we think might be the best data might be wrong. And you're totally right. I think we really need to consider what you just said in not only our, our design, but also our recommendations, because you're totally right that this is for the families of Hartford. Well, and to that end, I would just, you know, encourage everyone to review the paper, you know, and, and everyone should have an opportunity to go in, not only review it, but then offer their, their feedback, you know, make some edits. You know, if you, if you put in something that, like if you ask a question, for example, um, and, and it's pertaining to something that the researchers have outlined in the paper, then highlight your question and the researchers will, ask, will answer it. You know, we'll find a way to best communicate this, but you gotta play an active role in that paper. Um, this report is really what's going to be submitted to council, and it's going to be what's available for residents. And I've been monitoring, you know, who's been been checking in on the paper, and I'm disappointed that more task force members aren't playing as active a role in the development of the paper as they as they could, because this is the kind of feedback that we're going to need. Well, my response to that is talking to the people doing the research and talking to the community is the same thing. What's the difference between talking to the people doing the research and writing on a document and talking to the community in a, in a school setting and coming back and reporting at this meeting? It's the same thing. Well, um, because that kind of feedback should definitely go in the paper. 
Um, you know, if, if you're getting feedback from having these conversations with parents and you're like, well, I see in the paper that you're saying that we should target families with children between grades three and eight, this is the feedback that I'm getting in the community. And I don't think this is a good idea. That way they know because they're not having the conversations that, for example, you're having. I think David, part of it is, um, I won't speak for Colleen, but, um, well, maybe a little bit is, you know, the impression of our subcommittee is the research team is developing the paper. Um, our opportunity to provide feedback is during the task force calls. And then once the paper is a little further along, then we would be reviewing it. So perhaps it's a little miscommunication with the timing of the paper. Oh so, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I put something together as a starting document with the understanding mm -hmm. that this would be uh, evolving until the final document was available. Uh, I mean, until the final document was edited and ready. And anyone here who's part of the, the actual task force should be uh, um, given access to that to provide um, their own comments and contributions as part of that ongoing cooperative editing process. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, if you're not a part of the research uh, working group, that's fine. Um, you have just as much ownership over the paper as everyone else. Uh, so I do apologize if the understanding, yeah. Carolyn, from your group was that, you know, you're not necessarily as involved in writing the paper. That's just not accurate. I definitely want you all to participate um, from start to finish. All right. I just got the ball rolling, essentially. All right. So any other questions or comments uh, for, from Gina or the rest of the research team? Um, well, I do encourage Carolyn and Stefan to read what was put together so far and the reasoning behind the third to eighth grade, which doesn't mean it's set in stone, but just that there was a rationale behind it. Um, and that um, I guess one of the things that we were thinking was that there were certain kinds of data that would be available for a comparison group that wouldn't be available for younger age groups um, in terms of looking at the study, right? So um, when kids go to school um, between third and, and eighth grade, they have um, 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 like there's certain administrative data that just doesn't exist for the younger kids. And so, but that's not, um, uh, that's just one thing that can be measured, right? So getting cooperation from volunteers for other kinds of data that doesn't include that administrative data is 100% uh, possible, right? And so, um, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, as a group identifying what those things could be, right? Um, and, um, um, you know, there are other kinds of supports that are available for uh, very young kids, right? And so, you know, we certainly look at those things. If there's a strong preference in the community, then that needs to be an important piece that's included in the recommendations and that the city council be made aware of, um, you know, what uh, opportunities and what the community voice is, you know, in making their final decision. I don't know if that made sense. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, Gina, oh, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, we're, we're all on the same wavelength. I think that what's really important and Stefan and Colleen bring this perspective is, is making sure that we're going to have community engagement and it's going to be equitable um, and that we, we build the trust. So, you know, these sorts of comments, and I know we agree, are just invaluable. Um, because if, 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 if a resident looks at this program from the start, and you know, whether it's income level or grade level, or certain testing, you know, it's going to spread and there's going to be a lot of mistrust. So that's just so important to have, have in the whole program design. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I just will end out this part of the conversation by just saying 25 people is not a lot. Um, and I think that the, the idea that I've been in, that I have is, you know, how can we come up with objective um, qualifiers to get in the, the uh, to get in a group that is not only in need, but that is going to help us in, an, in, an, uh, in a non-objective way. And so that might be something that, that we take into consideration, but I, the idea is that if we can present and implement a pilot program over one year that produces really strong data, then we can leverage that data to increase funding so that we can expand to include more residents. Um, and so even though I think that it's important to, to definitely engage with the community, get their feedback, um, we have to also recognize that 25 people just isn't a lot. You know, that's not a lot of people. And so we have to get in really strong data. Otherwise, this pilot is going to be the end of it. Um, and I think that all of our goal is to expand the program so that we can help more families. Right. And that's actually to kind of piggyback on what David is saying. Um, um, what we're trying to do is design. So, you know, 25 families would receive the funds. And then if we can get um, grants, then we could have comparison groups. And you get different kinds of information when you have just the one group and when you have the comparison groups. Right. So when you have the comparison groups, then you you have, uh, um, you know, it's more of an experimental design and you can say, well, this group received the funds, this group didn't receive the funds. And you can sort of demonstrate that the funds themselves made the difference. Right. Um, whereas if you only have the primary 25 uh, people, then what we're doing is exploring how they how they see their lives as having changed. But you don't have the comparison group to provide the sort of evidence that it was primarily the money that changed um, their lives. It's more of a first person narrative exploration of demystifying how a person's life has changed and looking at patterns among 25 people. Um, and when um, um, you know folks are looking to expand on these kinds of programs, the more evidence we have, the greater the argument that you have. And that's uh, kind of why we were looking at the third to eighth grade as there's certain kinds of data that we could provide that we can't necessarily provide with under third grade. Um, and a line has to be drawn somewhere on who gets included and who doesn't get included. And the assumption that if folks have a child between third and eighth grade, that they're likely to have other children who are younger in, you know, in that household. Um, that said, if this is something that's really opposed by um, the greater Hartford community, right? Uh, the, a good chunk of the Hartford community, then you know, the question becomes what else can we measure so that we're reflecting um, the perspectives and including the, the, um, the voices of the people who we're trying to you know, help and support and whose voices we're actually trying to amplify in this process, right? So, um, which is why your comments are super helpful. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would just say, you know, I, I don't believe it's it's any of our intention to be gatekeepers um, to money. And and that's that's not what our goal is. Um, so I appreciate the feedback. Please continue to have those conversations with your families. If they have ideas to bring it to us, um, you know, we want to be as inclusive as possible. Uh, but we also want to recognize the fact that, you know, we're, we're limited on how we can select these folks. Um, so I'm definitely open to ideas. Before we move into uh, Carolyn's committee, sorry, I was just I was just going to specify that um, attendance and uh, school records, like report cards, are the kinds of things that um, can be looked at. Just as an example. Uh, so thank you for that, Gina. Um, if there are no more questions for or updates from the research team, I did realize that I skipped over public comment. Uh, we do have some members of the public who are on the phone with us. Uh, if any, if either of you would like to say anything, um, now yeah. is your time. Um, I had a quick question about the experimental group and how that would um, kind of be monitored given that um, since only 25 families would be getting the funds, 
how would you monitor the, the non-experimental group? So the only way we would be able to do that is if we get funds to compensate the folks in the non-experimental or what you would call treatment group. Um, um, and, and this is a common practice, basically, that you compensate people for the time and effort that they put into um, completing any of the questionnaires that you ask people to do. And I have asked the members of the research team to consult with their um, uh, uh, universities or other um, resources to identify potential sources of uh, grants and, support. and then we would have to apply for them and hope that we get those those funds. Um, otherwise, there is no incentive for anybody to participate. Yeah, I mean, I got a interesting in, interestingly enough this week I got a, a mailer from Gallup uh for the gallup panel and they just sent me like five dollar bill <laughs> it was the strangest thing and they're like we would like you to take part in, in surveys uh and here are some of the things that we can offer gift cards uh you know find our uh stipends and they just sent like a legit five dollar bill i was so blown away <laughs> that's amazing um, yeah. usually it's like a nickel <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bought a cup of coffee so thanks, Gallup. Nice. Okay, so any other comments from the public? Okay, so Carolyn, do you have any updates from uh, your working group that you'd like to share with the group? I do. Um, we met a couple of weeks ago and um, regarding the community forum, we are reaching out. It's, it's about maybe 35 to 40 different organizations including the same NRZs as last time. And then Colleen and Stefan um, have identified a couple of other groups. So um, I know Colleen has reached out to some, I was, well, I wanted to ask if the flyer is finalized because then I'll use that in the groups I reach out to and we pretty much split them up. And Adam too is gonna reach, is reaching out if he hasn't already um, to some of those organizations that he has ties to. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. First of all, um, that's a lot of organizations and that's a lot of networks. So thank you all for that. Uh, the flyer that I sent in, in the last email to, I believe it was Gina, you and Adam, that is the final draft. I mean, I didn't okay. get any feedback on that. So please feel free to share it. All right. Good to know. Um, and then two, I mean, we talked about a bunch of things um, regarding the community forum. It'd be helpful to us, you know, as we're reaching out to these groups to have you know, maybe a, a, a better understanding of how this community forum might differ from the first or if it's going to be set up pretty similarly. So we can answer questions of folks. And then, um, you know, I can't quite let this go, but just getting back to, you know, sort of expectations of having, you know, 25 families in the group versus, you know, a larger, and I understand the research piece of it, I do. But I think we have to be really careful and maybe use the next community forum to really, really set expectations that, you know, here's what we're doing, here's why it's going to be limited, and here's the benefit to the city. Just um, because Stefan and Colleen and I talked about it, we've just got to communicate really, really well and manage expectations. So folks understand it because they're not going to necessarily know right that if you know 25 folks are in it the the, the purpose is in the reasoning behind it so that's it um, yeah I, let, let me just say and stefan and colleen if you have anything to add you know please feel free well i did reach out to four organizations and i got the same question from each of them what would be their role in this community forum what do we expect them if anything, to bring to the UBI, um, which leads me to ask the group, can there be something small paragraph or paragraph and a half written up to give to these organizations to answer these questions? Because um, right now we're like flying blind, trying to get them to come to the community forum. They have questions and we have no answers. Yeah, um, I, before I, I, sorry I interrupted you, Carolyn, I thought that you had uh, finished. Um, this was 
Um, part of the difficulty in balancing the last community forum was the time to provide information and the time to seek feedback, um, which I think is just like an internal an eternal struggle for any kind of community forum uh, like this. And so the questions that I have um, and that other members um, here have about shaping this um, program, some of them remain the same. And I can email you the sort of general list of questions that we would like to get feedback on, but also that folks may have other feedback that doesn't fall within the, you know, the, the scope of the specific questions that we have. Um, but the other pieces in, in providing information and sort of mitigating the fact that, you know, it's, it's awful, but it's true that not everyone's gonna be happy um, with the final um, recommendations that, you know, because there's only 25 families, it breaks my heart that we can't just have an open random lottery for literally everyone because, uh, you know, in the best case scenario, that's what it would be. And, um, you know, to provide some reasoning why we have to draw some lines, but the bottom line is we have to draw some lines. And so how do we balance providing information, receiving feedback, um, but, but also making it a constructive dialogue that's worth everybody's time? Um, and uh, to that end, the PowerPoint that I developed before, um, I, um, first of all, I don't need to be the person that leads it. I did it last time. I'm happy to do it again, but I don't have to be that person. Second of all, um, um, any, you know, feedback on how to edit uh, the PowerPoint that was originally created is, is, is welcome and invited right now. So I just want to throw that out as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of that. So at the last community forum, we had 23 folks. And I, I think that in, in terms of your questions, Caroline, um, Carolyn, I, I just would like to say that the purpose of the community forum is to give people an opportunity to provide us with their feedback on and to answer or to ask questions. I think the last time that we did this, we spent a lot of time giving information about what universal basic income is and what the task force is and what we do and, and what our goals are. And it didn't leave a lot of, of time to answer questions. Um, we were getting bombarded. I mean, people were, were in the chat asking questions. People were using the Q&A feature. Uh, we were getting questions through Facebook. We were getting questions uh, emailed to us. And so there was just a lot of questions and we didn't have the time to answer them. So this community forum is gonna be much less structured and much more focused on answering questions and, and you know, receiving input. Okay, thank you. And I think um, I can resend it. I know two meetings ago from our subcommittee, we, we talked about some ideas uh, for the community forum and I think I sent them along. It, um, so I'll double check and I'll resend them um, to you, David and Gina. That, yeah. what, um, that would be fantastic, thank you. And what um, Stefan was saying when, if I talk to someone from the community of a nonprofit agency and they're asking if they've never heard of UBI, what it's all about, I usually refer back to the information when the city of Hartford first introduced it. I would pull up the information from the Hartford current or explain to them when it started out in California, give them some verbiage or send them a hard so they'll know somewhat a little bit about the program because if they don't know nothing and they're starting from fresh, they would have some information right there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that there was a comment about a paragraph. I included a paragraph in the flyer. Mm -hmm. And so in the flyer, it gives some basic background on UBI and what our role here is and yeah. what the purpose of the community forum is. But then I, I also believe that I sent the task force um, an initial PowerPoint that I gave to city council to create the task force in the first place. And it's really broken down into like very basics on UBI. You know, that this is not just, a, a, this didn't just start in California. Like we're talking decades ago 
um, and and uh, the the program that Alaska has, and like what North Carolina did. I mean, it's very it's it's a good intro to UBI. So you're more than welcome to share that too. Yeah, and, that's, yeah. and I read that's about other I, states what they're doing. I've read up on that, and I you know I tell them. But you know, as we're saying, we only got 25 families. Did we ever ask the city of Hartford or the mayor to see if there's any extra funds that they got of, of DC that can help us so we can have maybe a hundred families? Did you re ever reach out to the mayor, David? So there's a couple of issues. Um, and, and Gina, you, maybe you can tag team this with me. When we met with the, with the Greater Hartford Legal Aid, um, mm -hmm. there was some conversation around benefits and uh, funding coming directly from the government. Uh, and so there's potentially, uh, you know, some issues that we would face, that participants would face if the city of Hartford was to administer the funding directly or if the funding were to come from the city of Hartford. And so you're, you're right. I think that the 25 families was originally a number that we didn't arbitrarily come up with. We said, okay, well, here's the amount of, of money that we potentially have going into this program. If we wanted to give families $500 per month for a year, how many families could we really support? And that's where we came up with 25. Um, but if the recommendations of the task force, now that families will also be receiving, you know, $250 to $300 per month per child through the child tax credit, mm -hmm. if we wanted to say, instead of giving those same families $500 a month, we want to do $250 a month then obviously we would be able to increase the number of families that we serve. Um, none of this is finite, which is why your guys' input is so important. So Carolyn, Colleen, Stefan, make sure that you're, you're taking an active role in the report. Um, if there's something that you all wanna advocate for specifically, send us an email. You know, we'll, we'll definitely take that into consideration. Everyone's opinion matters equally in this. Um. I'm just going to piggyback on what David was saying um, in that what we were told in that meeting was that um, funds can be considered a gift if they come through um, like a grant or, you know, from some grant making institution. But if the money comes directly from the city of Hartford, then it's considered income and not a gift. And that shifts a family's um, total taxable income, which uh, doesn't protect them from a benefits cliff. And we could try to seek certain kinds of guarantees, not to cut people's benefits from uh, certain kinds of benefits, but um, the number of types of benefits that could be impacted looks like it would expand beyond just SSI. Um, and, uh, um, and so we really have to think very carefully about how to move forward with this because either we wind up supplementing not only, um, we wind up, uh, otherwise we wind up either supplementing the entire time people are in this program, what they lose from those benefits, or we tell people by um, signing up for this, if you are, if you are randomly selected, that you will likely lose these benefits during the time you're in the program. Um, and that of course would be a decision that an individual family would have to make for themselves based on um, uh, you know, their own personal variety of factors and, and how that, you know, their understanding of how it would impact their lives. Um, and so that becomes another question for us to, to look at in terms of putting this together. Now, Gina, with that being said, and you know, what Stefan was saying earlier, if I'm talking to a, a parent and they're asking me, how would I be qualified for this program? Um, you know, income, we, we talked um, last time that income would not be a factor. How would we tell them how would they be qualified for that program to get the $500 a month? Because I'm sure that's the first question they'll ask. How do I get qualified? Well, I think we don't know yet. You know, we're, we're, our job right now is to craft recommendations for the council, right, who will be the ultimate ones to decide. So it's going to be hard for us to provide definitive answers okay. next Thursday. Um, so I guess, um, you know, 
what, what else could we provide that would be helpful in answering questions like that? Because it is very real that we will get questions like that and those are valid. Yeah. But given the fact that we don't know the answers yet because we're not the city council who will decide, what kinds of information would be useful? So I'll just say a work in progress, we're working. Because I'm sure, as you said, Matt, that they're going to have questions next week. I'm sure when we do this meeting on the 20th, that's probably one of the questions they're going to be asking us sure, as a group. Sure. How do we get qualified for this money? So you're saying we might say something like it's a work in progress and ultimately we can only provide recommendations. Mm -hmm. But here are maybe some of the ways that you might qualify. Oh, okay. Is, would, that, would that be... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just I'm going to be asking what do we tell them? I mean, it's yeah, it's a work in progress. I mean, it's not finalized yet. Yeah. And we don't we're not the decision makers. Right. That's All correct. we're doing is crafting a document for the city council to make their own informed decision about how they want to move forward. To be honest, just sitting here listening mm -hmm. for the last 10 minutes, if this was a form, I would be highly pissed. And I would feel like you guys don't know what you're talking about because all I'm hearing is we don't know yet. We don't have answers. We're mm -hmm. still working on it, which tells me it's not complete. If I'm sitting in the forum and I'm listening to you guys say this, it's like, then what are you really presenting to me? Well, um, they're not going to want to hear that. We're not presenting something. We're asking for community yeah. feedback. And I was just going to say, Gina, but, but I'm just saying a big disconnect. It, it seems like we need to wait on doing a form until we have answers because we don't want with me being in the community on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. Hartford already does not trust anything mm -hmm. the, the, the state brings period I don't, I don't care how you dress it I don't care what appetizers you bring you can promise everybody $300 just for showing up they don't trust it period mm -hmm. so to have a form and every other answer be uh, we're working on it. It's a work in progress. We don't know yet. They're going to leave that. that form and they're going to tell other people in the community. Oh, that, that UBI is BS. They don't even know what they're doing. Um, it sounds like to me, we need to wait to where we can actually answer questions. Um, it's great to do a form to get feedback. Yeah. But to do a form to get feedback mm -hmm. and look and, and we don't want to stay and make a fool of yourself. I guess that's the best way for me to put it because mm -hmm. you have no answers for the community. You don't want to hurt the, you don't want to hurt the pilot before it starts. I guess that's we won't the see them again. We're not, they're just going to walk away. So I, I know I, I, I been the, in Hartford I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we can say to people, we are drafting recommendations and we're here because we want to hear from the community of, about you know, um, what kind of recommendations that you have to include to tell the city. And we can tell them what we have come up with so far, but that we're not the final decision makers. Mm -hmm. oh, I think what I'm hearing is there is a big disconnect. And again, Stefan raises really good points that I know I wasn't aware of, which is to me, it seems like when the community hears community forum, they're going to get questions answered, right? And we don't have the answers yet. But to us, we want this to be a primary means for getting input to draft our final recommendations. And those are two disparate needs. And so if we are going to still have this community forum, and I can totally understand coming, like the community thinking, this is where I'm going to get questions answered, because usually that's what community forums do, right? Is get exactly. questions answered. So, Either we need to rename it, which is probably too late by now, um, or at the at the outset, if our primary goal is to get feedback from the community, then we need to come up with questions that we want them to answer for us so that we can craft recommendations that will best reflect the needs of the community while also being as scientifically sound as possible. Is that correct? Am I hearing you correctly, Stefan? Because I really you might correct. not see them. I've been in the Hartford in Hartford a long time, and I deal with a lot of communities, the school, the NRZ, and other um, communities in Hartford. If we don't give them the information what they want, the next meeting that we try to have, it could be in person online, 
we're not going to see them again. They're going to be walking away and we're not going to see them again. That's what they will do. Yeah. And this so, was the struggle in the balance of the last meeting. So I guess my mm -hmm. question is, uh, do you have recommendations for how we can get feedback from the community? If maybe this is not the way to do it. I would say we first need to put a skeleton together of what we do know. So when we do have a form, we do have some solid answers to stand on that we can present to where we do look like, okay, you know what, we're growing, we're where we have momentum now. This is where we're getting the funding from. We've gotten we've gotten these stable um, answers from City Hall and so forth on the family dynamic, the structure, how we want to present the money to the families. There has to be something concrete to stand on. And promises they don't want to hear. I was on a meeting with the mayor um, last week, and it was just like they promised us years ago when we had Eddie Perez as a mayor. Okay, we're going to give this to Hartford resident Albany Avenue. We're going to give them um, a family type restaurant. And here it is, Mayor Ronan repeated again. And we are going back to when Andy Perez, I was on that meeting with him at the library, never happened. And here you have city residents, was that the artist collective or virtually? Oh, we hear this long time. They're going to fix up North Norwest Jones. The mayor said it again. I was at the library just before I came over and I was saying to the library, I said, oh, we heard that before. And I said, this, the mayor said on Monday, but we heard the same story. You make promises. We want to see actions. I've been to these meetings. Gwendolyn came to work with the governor. We used to go to meetings together. It's been a long time. We want to see action. You tell them that you're going to do something and you don't have all your ducks in a row. We would not see them again. They're going to walk away because they're going to say it's a waste of time. Well, oh, we can have, say we're doing Hey, Regina, one second. So I have a very legitimate question. Mm -hmm. Has your working group read the report? The report that you send over? Yes. Carolyn, Stefan, Colleen, have you guys read the report? Well, as I said, David, you know, it was our understanding that, you know, we would be reading it when it was more final. But I think mm -hmm. what Colleen and Stefan are basing their comments are on just generally, you know, here's a really good way to handle the community forum and based mm -hmm. upon, you know, and, and I, I think that it can be communicated well, but, you know, it sounded like at one point that we would be not really telling them much. And that, yeah. that's really where the comments were so, coming from. Um, and um, Amanda, I saw you unmute uh, yourself. I just want to clearly ask, have you, so it's my understanding then, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have not read the report. I've read some of it. I have not read I read it. some of it too, because I was at work when I saw it and I came home late yeah. last night and so I was rushing to get home. So I that report is, is at right now in its current form, is pretty thorough. Um, mm -hmm. It offers a lot of really good questions or answers to the questions that you're asking right now. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say is I would encourage you all to really take some time to read the report because I do think that that will help you in your conversations with the community. Um, can I also jump in? I just, I looked at the Facebook link for the forum, which to my knowledge is kind of the only public facing um, information about the forum that's going to be next week and it's specific it's in the description it describes what UBI is and how in March the city council authorized the creation of the task force and then it says that we are actively seeking input from the residents of the city of Hartford what would you like to see in this program and so that I feel like that is very clear in saying we want your input not we're going to give you all the answers because we want your input to create the answers. So just like Gina put in the chat, I wonder if our next step, which has to be pretty soon now, is to draft a list of questions that we specifically want input about and then circulate those to um, Stefan and Colleen and others for feedback and really upfront at the start of the forum, make it abundantly clear. We want, you, we want you to inform the recommendation process. We want your input, we want your feedback, and then go through the questions one by one and get 
and get the feedback because I do think there's some somewhere along the way there's been this um, possibly um, uh, I don't know some miscommunication that this is going to be a, a Q and A you know answering what the program is going to look like. Well, we were what I gathered from the last Q and A, there was going to be a grace period where the community was going to have a Q and A to get answers. But we cannot have a Q and A for answers if we don't have answers. No, no matter how you word it, ice it, no matter what you write in a document, we don't have solid answers. We don't. Right. Um, so how in return do we have a Q and A when we don't have answers? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, Stefan. Is this isn't intended to be a Q and A. It's well, I mean, sorry. It's intended to be a we ask questions of the community as to what they would like to see or the feedback you got about uh, parents being really angry that just because they don't have um, a, a third, fourth grader or a third grader, they might not even be considered. Those are the kinds of things that we want, not how the program itself will be run, which I think would come at the first half of next year before program implementation. Once, once the council decides how it will be run, then we can have a community forum of a different kind of Q and A where we and we you know we answer questions about um, what the program is going to look like. You might think of it this way: this is a Q and A where we have the questions and the community has the answers, and then exactly. a later forum yeah. where the community has the questions and we have the answers. And yeah. Tina, when we talked last time, are we going to go by how much money they make by the income or is it going to be a lottery? Have we decided on that yet? Are we still working on that? So I would say that's exactly the kind of question we would actually probably want to bounce back to the community, you know. Uh, we should already have that answer. Why are we asking the community <laughs> that when we should already have that answer? Like other provide, states, they have an income limit. But we can't have that answer because we're only providing recommendations that the council themselves will decide what to do. Okay, so I guess when we have the meeting, we will see what question the community are going to be asking, and they're probably going to be saying the same thing. You guys should have the answers for them, not them. They're going to be asking information about the program because you're going to ask about income limits. How do they get qualified? Is it I totally be hear you. And that those are totally valid questions. But I guess what do we do to make it clear that we are the ones seeking input from the residents of Hartford, not that we are ready to answer all their questions yet? How can we make that clear? Those I wonder if there's some rebranding that can take place, even though it's pretty late in the game, and call it, you know, or have a subtitle that this is a participatory design session or something like that, that it's not a forum in the sense that what we're recognizing is the shared understanding of what a forum is because we've you know, clearly identified that we misunderstood what that terminology meant. And if that we could rebrand it in some way, giving it a name that shows that there are these really Key components that we're we're working to engage stakeholders who have intimate knowledge of life in the city and get their input in making design recommendations into this program that that to potentially have some some component of rebranding in this last you know ten days or however many we have left. Um, to help clarify some of that, to, to still hold the event, to have it, to have a, you know structured questions to present to the participants, but to call it something else, and I think that that might help um, clarify. And I, you know, I'm, I'm looking sort of to to the group um, to think about like what would we call that? I I work in participatory budgeting, so we use a lot of that language a lot. But is there like some type of participatory design or something else that we, we even call it? Out? Yeah, yeah. Can we even call it community input forum, mm -hmm. right? And then revise if it's a Facebook um, link is the only thing that's really public facing, and we revise that blurb to add more detail or to specifically state, you know, this is your opportunity to tell us what you would like included or to to have your voice be heard, and then maybe even specifically state that at a later time, questions about how the program will be run. Are going to be answered but this is not it i don't know 
I think yeah, that's I mean, a good idea. Um, I think we've got to be careful though. And we, we actually talked about this is in, in our uh, subcommittee call is, you know, we're going to be asking, you know, questions and they'll provide feedback. We don't want them to feel like they wasted their time providing feedback right. on certain components that we know that we are not going to use that, you know, there's certain program components that are kind of set. And I don't know, personally, I think it's fine, you know, to state what we think some of our recommendations are gonna be rather than this like great big black hole. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's really, really important, you know, if we're getting feedback to sort of drive it a little bit to those areas where, you know, we would incorporate it. And then two, um, you know, just to clarify, I had a mental block. Um, in our last calls a few weeks ago, Colleen, Stefan, and I actually looked at the report. I had sent it to them and talked about it. And David, I know you said there's been a lot of revisions, but um, somehow that escaped me that we did go through it. We kind of skipped to the research piece because I certainly don't understand it, but we, we read like the program components piece of it. Well, so it's not like we want them to do a survey. We might as well have a survey here for them and said, this is what you, you know, what are your ideas about the program? That's what it sounds like we should be giving them a survey. I think so, that's a great point, Colleen, is if we could have a subset of the questions posted on Facebook, that these mm -hmm. are the kinds of things we'd like to ask you. Exactly. And if you can't participate at this event, we will follow up with maybe a link to a survey that folks mm -hmm. can fill out later on, revised based on what we get from the event itself. And I think that, yeah, I think that's a great idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea. Definitely. A question we we need to have the answer for because it kept getting repeated. The last form, how much of this will be shaped by parents of Hartford? We got that question over and over and over. How many parents are on the committee? How many parents on the committee live in Hartford? Mm -hmm. How many of them have a family in Hartford? I mean, it was that question was given to us in so many ways. Um, it's a really valid question. I think we need an answer for that for this form. Um, because it was asked so many times. So if we don't have an answer for anything else, we definitely need an answer for that. Look, I mean, I, I, so I guess I'm just confused. Like we have parent, we have people who have children, um, on this group, obviously. I do um, have kids. But they what I would them. say too, is like, I don't have kids. Does, are you, Stefan, would you then say that I'm not qualified to be a part of this process? I mean, I I'm, not, I'm not asking a question. The question came from the 23 <laughs> people that attended the last form. So they, we know, for example, you have kids. Correct. We know that Colleen has kids. I we do. know I that do. Amanda has kids. So, I mean, we know that people have kids. I guess what I'm just asking is, one, that, that's our answer. We have, we have parents on this. But, Ste but Stefan's point is not all of us have kids and live in the city of Hartford. My experience as a parent is very different than the experience of parents in Hartford. And that is very valid. If we have one person on the task, Stefan, do you live in Hartford? Okay. If we have one person on the task force. That's right. I do live in Hartford. I, I, I can understand the Hartford. Point. I live in Hartford. But, you know, Amanda, you're saying that parents in Hartford is so different from parents in the suburbs. You know, what made them so different from living in Hartford and living in the suburbs? I did move to the suburb and I moved back to Hartford myself. And I, I yeah. raised two kids in Hartford as a single parent. They yeah. went off to college, you understand? They've done very well. So I don't, what's the difference of parents that live in the suburbs and Hartford where they have more money than the ones that live in Hartford? Can I interject here? I think that question was asked by the, the people that attended because yeah. they wanted to know if the day-to-day -day struggle for Hartford families was actually at the center of what we're trying to do. It wasn't who's from the suburbs, who's from yeah. the inner city. It I meant was, that my experience is different than the- Yeah, that, that's like, what they're I'm really trying to, trying to get at. I, I guess I'm wondering if we can answer that by saying that that is what we're, you know, attempting to do by both including stakeholders like Stefan and Colleen and also collecting this information from the parents of Hartford through these channels that we're trying to utilize, including this event to be rebranded 
as well as a survey and other mechanisms to gather that information so that we are engaging with the parents of Hartford to right. shape this and that there is stakeholder representation on the task force as well. Um, so that, that to me that that would be potentially the answer or part of the answer, I think, um, in trying to clarify that that is actually the, the purpose of these events um, is, to, is to have those experiences and perspectives inform this process. I think that would be a good way to start the forum since it was one of the key questions. Um, you know, we took the time to go over the questions that was presented to us. And one of the major questions was, did we include families from Hartford to be a part of shaping the UVI? And we do have two, two families that are involved, that are members. Um, and presenting going forward, we would like to have your input as families from Hartford and surrounding cities to kind of give us more input and data to shape the UVI. Um, if we lead like that, um, it kind of cuts off the question of, did you get parents? Are there parents? Okay, we answered that. Now, we're also letting you know we're here for questioning to get data from you as a parent. So therefore, you, we answered your question. You know why you're here. Let's begin the forum. That's exactly it. And that was perfect, Seven. Yeah, so I mean, that's like, I, I love that. Thank you, Stefan. I, I don't want this group, I like the, I feel like there's like, based on this conversation, this mentality of like us versus them. And that is not the case. Like you all are just as important as everyone else. Like, and if there's, if, there, if you're getting feedback from the community as task force members, I would expect you to be able to resolve that either through doing research on this, reading the report and telling people to go to the Facebook page. I mean, the really trying to be as involved as possible because I recognize a Hartford, as a Hartford resident myself, some of the culture that exists here in the city and we need to be prepared for it. And that's why I think that your opinions are so important. But again, I just would like to see more cohesion between our working groups. And, and I would like to see more collaboration because I do know that in the last couple of months, you know, the working groups have worked in silos and we did that because we felt like it was the best way to, to get some of this work done. Now we're coming to a point where we have to join back together to get this report done. And so really looking at the report, take some time after this meeting, read the report. It's good. Like there's rationale in there for some decisions there's a reason why they're proposing one thing versus another. And, you know, if you are like, this is not a good idea, then let's, let's have that. Let's have that conversation. The other thing, and the last thing I'll say before we have to move on, because it's already 707, is on the flyer, uh, Stefan and Colleen, I don't know if you had an opportunity to review the flyer. Did you see the flyer? I did, but I didn't finish reading it, David, because I was at work when I saw it. Okay. So the flyer says... In the main tagline, review our initial report and provide input. The way that I anticipated the 28th community forum going is that in our PowerPoint, we would have some of those initial recommendations that we have in our report. And we would allow them to give us feedback on where we're at. So I, I, I would just encourage everyone to, again, review that material that's been sent out through your emails. That's part of the reason why it's difficult sometimes to, to bring in more Hartford residents because it's th this kind of work takes time. And a lot of the families that I engage with, they have three, four kids, they're single parents, they're working two to three jobs. Mm -hmm. We have to do that work for them because they, they really are counting on us to be their champion in this. So please invest the time, review the materials, review the documents, and then let's have honest conversations about how we can confront these questions so that we are cohesive and one group. So anything else on this topic before we move on? All right, so moving into the next item is the final report discussion. So in the report, we have introduction, goals, and community input. The research team does need to input their goals, so the goals are not there. Um, but the community input sections have been have been outlined, and they will be continued to be inputted 
as we move into this community forum and the last one. We've got one more that we have to do in November. We're gonna take the feedback that we get at this community forum and have another paragraph in the report based on that input. And then we'll be able to address some of that through the other portions of the report. Next month, we will need to get into the final two sections, which are the methodology sections and the, uh, the target, identifying the, the target communicate or community. By next month, we should have a more complete report. So hopefully we're able to meet that December, what is it, December 7th deadline that I talked about a month ago. Yes. I'll take a look again because I thought I had included goals, but I'm wondering if they're not expressed in the way that you expected them to be expressed. Yeah, I definitely read over some draft at some point that included goals. So, uh, yeah. And I, I think this circles back to, you know, tone, style, audience, because I, 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 I see it, but I, I feel like some of us are, are reading with similar social science backgrounds, but not in like a broader policy paper context. So, so if we can have you know, very explicit guidance on, on tone, style, and audience, I think that that's gonna be critical in like getting us through that last mile because we'll, I, I do want everybody to put in all of their ideas, but if we get them in, in the right style and tone, then there's less miscommunication along the way too, I, I think. So section number three, the goals section is missing. So if you all have, just have you, if you've done your goals already, then I just please after tonight, go into the report and put that in under section three. Yeah, Amanda and Christine, if you could take a look between the draft that got uploaded and the stuff that we had uh, gone back and forth on before, maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe you'll see something that I didn't see. Um, or uh, David, if you have a example of what you, how you would like those goals to be expressed. Just bullet know? points, how bullet goals? points, bullet points of the goals. I, I think that that's gonna be sufficient. And Gina, the last one I remember working with was a Google doc. Yes. Yeah, there was a Google doc. Um, and then I used, what happened was is there was a, there were multiple Google Docs. There was the <laughs> there was the one that was the outline based on the pre analysis plan, um, mm -hmm. and then there were some things that Steve wrote, and then there were some emails, and I kind of pulled all that together. And also there was there were things that came up in the meeting last month about um, uh, like income limits, guidelines, that sort of thing. And so that weighed heavily on my mind in the introduction section as I tried to give background on what a UBI is. Um, and so I kind of cobbled all of that together into something and things got left out because I was over explaining certain parts and then worried about taking up too much space on other parts, um, which is why I said this was a first draft for folks to kind of look at um, in, in terms of then figuring out, like, do we offer, you know, like Steve, for example, had like three or four different rationales for different kinds of approaches that we could take, right? So I, I, I focused on if we had a, um, an RCT versus an observational study on just the 25 folks and knowing that we could throw in other iterations, but I wasn't sure if that was a good idea or not. You know what I mean? Because I was worried about the space. And so um, um, that kind of went into part of that draft. I found some uh, statistics on Hartford for explaining, you know, who's likely to apply uh, and the, um, the economic uh, uh, the income background, you know, uh, of, of Hartford, you know, of Hartford residents and things like that, racial breakdown. Yeah, uh, I thought that was really good, Gina. Thank um, you. Thank page, you. The page data. seven just really quickly, page seven, Stefan, Carolyn, and Colleen. Uh, page seven has, it starts with the, the breakdown of the working groups and their work, but it also get in, it gets into the inclusion criteria and then the rationale and the exclusion criteria and the rationale. And so I think that that will help in your conversations with the community. But again, when you're having those conversations with the community, you can tell them where we're at right now, but make sure that you always let them know None of this is final. We really do want their input 
So if they have recommendations based on what you're, what information you're giving them, write that down and then come back and report it back to the rest of us and we'll include it in the report. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I had sort of left open, this was some of the disagreement that we had in our public forum meeting, you know, this meeting, right, um, um, last month. Um, and that can all be smoothed out if we come to some agreements, for example, um, which is why it's a working document. Yeah, but I really was very impressed with the with it. So, you know, I, Thank again, you. just please review it. Um, hopefully that answers some of your questions. And also, um, everyone, if you anticipate some questions that residents might ask in our community forum, let us know so that we can start to, to get together some resources or answers. We don't want to walk into the 28th, which is two weeks from tonight. We don't want to walk into that meeting looking like we don't know what we're talking about. So Stefan, you know, you made that comment and, and that really hit hard for me because I don't want us to look like that. I do want us to look like we are professionals. We have been dedicating the time to doing this work. We do know what we're talking about um, and we do want to include community input as much as possible because we understand how important a program like this could potentially be for all Hartford residents. Can I uh, throw out a suggestion? Um, that everybody in this, uh, uh, you know, here at the meeting today, who is a member of the committee, um, that we draft some questions that we want to ask of the community, so that we have a collective agreement on uh, some of, you know, some of that focus. Um, and then it might um, not be the worst idea um, if maybe Stefan, you be the person to open up that meeting to kind of explain that we're looking for the community feedback. Would and I will be at a meeting do? on the 23rd, cleaning up Hartford, and I will be meeting with a group of parents. I will be asking them some questions. So I will also have some feedback, Gina. I'm yes. also involved in the community. Uh, yeah, well, my, my point was is that we draft questions. And you know when you meet with members of the community, also to use those questions in your conversations, yeah, that's what and, I said. I will be cleaning up Hartford on the 23rd. And if we can have a deadline of drafting those questions by the 20th, that will give us time to, you know, collate them all and put them all together and then share them out with the task force so that they can 20th? be. Oh, I won't see them until the 23rd when I would see well, well, them. We have to, we have to like, and so it'll take a few days to have the questions in hand before you see the community right. members. Right. Okay. If yeah, we all submit our draft questions to the task force by the 20th. And I, I can put those together. So I'll, I'll create a, a shared Google Doc and send it out to the task force and folks can just dump their questions there, do a brain dump of what kinds of things you want input on. Thank you, Amanda. That would be great. And then Carolyn, I so with last time we had a moderator, I don't think we should go that route. Um, Carolyn, can you talk with your group? I would like to see someone from your group moderate uh, the community forum um, because you guys are working directly with these folks to get them to come. Um, and so I think that that might be good. And it doesn't have to be one person. I mean, if your entire working group wants to tag team this, I'm all for that. Do you mean moderate in what Gina hit, did for the last uh, community yes. forum? Or just, yeah. You know, we can think about it. I, I liked Gina. She, first of all, she did a fabulous job and she understands where we are with all the program components. And I would say we don't necessarily know all the detail, yes, on pieces, whether it's the debit card or this or that, you know, so I, I would advocate for Gina, but Colleen and Stefan, let me know what you think. Let everyone know. Yeah, Gina. I, I was just gonna say I'm frustrated again because we just spent like 20 minutes talking about how the purpose of this community input forum now is to get ask questions of the community and get feedback, not to provide program answers. And so I actually really liked Gina's um, idea of not to put staff on the spot. Um, but I'll just repeat what her idea was, <laughs> is to have him at least open up the meeting. Um, and introduce that this is the goal for this. Yeah, uh, I think that's, 
and having a role is a really good idea, but I, you know, they're bound to ask questions and it feels a little awkward, you know, if we don't know the responses to turn them over to Gina every time. That, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm, guess... happy, I'm happy to try to, you know, do the best that I can with that and while keeping the focus on these are questions that we have for folks, you know, um, um, so that it doesn't get flipped <laughs> into the Q and A being an A and Q. <laughs> yeah, and I guess my only input on this was that you know Gina did take care of that last time, and you know there are more than enough members um, in this group to to divvy out some of that responsibility. Uh, and because your your working group has worked directly with these community organizations, and you've had the most contact directly with the community, uh, I just think it'd be a, a good idea to have you all be the ones to help guide this conversation. Um, and of course, you're not going to do that alone, just like before. You know, all of us are going to be there with you. But you know, these these folks, they trust you. You you've been doing this work in the community for a really long time, and and I do think that it would be good uh, to have you all you know take the take the lead, and we will follow you. Well, how's this? Maybe the three of us, Colleen, Stefana, and I can talk because it wouldn't be me because you know I'm not part of the community, and potentially talk about you know us opening it up as you suggested, David, and then you know the three of us will chat and, and we can get back to the team and provide, you know, some recommendations. That would be great. Um, and then if Christine or Amanda, or if, if Steve, I guess we'll hear about this later, are able to attend that I'm not the uh, only person at the meeting this time, um, then we have uh, multiple voices um, as well in terms of, uh, you know, people might respond to Amanda's um, calm nurturing voice. <laughs> Um, as opposed to my more peppy, I don't know. I uh, I had the COVID vaccine yesterday, so I'm still a little loopy. But um, you know, different personalities people respond to, and so maybe community members will respond to one person versus another asking a question. You know, which is why I, I'm just saying. You know, uh, I I shouldn't be. I don't mind, but I shouldn't be the only face of the committee, because we are in fact a team, we are in fact a committee. Yeah, and I do think it's, you know, we're at that stage where, you know, everyone has to have some ownership in this. Um, we've only got a month and a half left, uh, and then we're done. Our, our, our task force, you know, it, it's done, it's over. Uh, and so we really wanna make sure that that report is cohesive. We really wanna make sure that all of you are walking away from this experience feeling as though you had meaningful input, uh, your voice was heard, and that this wasn't a waste of time for you. Um, you all should walk away from this not only more knowledgeable about UBI, but equally excited as everyone else that this could potentially launch next year and that we are going to help you know, families get some additional help. Uh, and, and I think that that's really exciting personally, but I want my excitement to be like our excitement. Like I, I really, I do, I, I feel for this. I've been working on this now for two years and, and I just, I wanna see something like this really happen and really change the way that, that Harvard residents, you know, live their lives. So um, please take ownership of it, you know? And, and if you wanna call a meeting, if you really are like, ah, I'm reading this report and I don't know about this, call a meeting, like you have the power. Carolyn, if you wanna jump on a call with Christine, Amanda and myself, because this just, you know, you're reading this and you have some questions, do it, send us an email, you know, uh, if, and that goes for everyone. Christine, if you're, you know, really have some questions about the community forum and you're like, you know, I would like to get Stefan's input on something, let me know, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, everyone has the power to make a difference in this, in this task force. And I, I know that sounds super cheesy and I'm sorry, I was watching cartoons earlier, but like, this is a real opportunity for us to make some change. And, and I want you all to be a part of that. I can't edit out that cartoon comment, so that that's awkward for me. Not at all, um, David. Oh, I think embrace and tell us what cartoons you were watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it Steven Universe? Double down. Carol <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that that's a conversation for another time. 
Uh, so that's the, the, the last in note on our agenda is the community forum update. So that's on the 28th. Please disperse the flyer. Uh, if you don't like the flyer, you, you want to make some changes, let me know. I can do that. But we've got two weeks essentially to promote this event. Uh, so we do still have time to make changes. Well, so I guess, are we going to do any rebranding? I mean, to the extent that it reflects all of the issues that have come up today before that, that flyer gets disseminated? Yeah, I can definitely do that. If uh, Carolyn, uh, actually everyone, I don't want to put this on any one person, take a look at the flyer. And if you're like, hey, let's strike this word, let's change this out, let's modify this, send me that and I will have an updated flyer done by the end of this week. I know that's tomorrow, but. Damon, you know, I'm really can... sorry, but I think I missed something. I don't have a flyer in my in mailbox. I don't either. I have the Facebook link that um, Adam sent last Thursday, but I don't okay. have a flyer. I will send that email right now to Thank everyone you. so that you all have the flyer. Take a look at it. Let me know what you want changed. Thank you. Thank you. So any last thoughts before we adjourn? Okay. Well, I'm going to send out the flyer, take a look at the report, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all uh, the second Thursday next month. Well, actually, I'll see you all at the community forum, hopefully. Uh, but our next scheduled meeting is going to take place the second Thursday in November. That's going to be one of our final meetings before we have to have that report submitted in December. So um, keep an eye out on your emails. Wait, send we're not meeting things. before the forum? What was that? We're not meeting before the forum to go over the questions we decided and everything. We can schedule a meeting. Yeah, if you want to do, uh, Stefan, a full meeting with everyone just to cover everything, we can do that. We can hold a special meeting whenever we want. I just need 48 hour notice to, to give to the public. Um, if we have less than quorum, then you don't need to make it a public meeting also. Right, it should be a meeting with just us preparing for the forum. Going yeah. over the questions we selected, how yeah. we gonna start the forum. Um, just, just, it doesn't even have to be a long meeting, just something where we start to prepare and say, okay, the forum's in the next couple of days, where yeah. are we? This Great is idea. Meeting. Yeah. Great idea. Can you, um, Stefan, can you throw out a couple of dates and times that will work for you? And then we can try to work around that to figure out um, a good time. And send an email to us, in other words, with your calendar. Will do, will do. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Well, that being said, thank you all for, for taking the time to join us at 7.27 p.m. and I'm officially adjourning the meeting. Have a great night, take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks everybody. Thank Thanks.